This is Coco. She's the newest one. I think we're going with Timothy for Timothy Hay because he loves eating Timothy Hay. I knew it. It's alive? Yes. And it's a spot. You want me to get out or you're going to get out? Be safe. Be safe. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It has been a while. Uh, we've been focused so much on what we're doing over here, building up the sanctuary. I've been doing daily vlogs on my other channel, Gator Chris, but we haven't given you guys any updates over on this channel. So we have a lot of stuff going on. Our last post was a month ago and so much has changed in that time. So we have new animals, um, new updates at the facility, like uh, uh, just a ton of stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into it and show you some of the new things. All right, so first off, got a golf cart. And a truck. <laughs> this is not even a week old yet. Yeah. We yeah, got a brand so. new truck, finally. It's been much needed. Yeah, so hopefully uh, we don't have to put alligators in my Honda Civic anymore. Yeah. First thing we're going to do is go feed the new small parrot aviary with the parakeets, the budgies, the cockatiels, and we got a little quail in there too. So let's go uh, feed them. All right, so this is our new small parrot aviary. So we've got a ton of budgies in here, some cockatiels, and we got some little quail on the ground that we just literally put in there yesterday. Um, so we've actually had this tarped up through the whole winter. And so the tarp is still down on the ground because we might get another cold snap. And so we just want, I know, looks like crap but we want to have this around still just in case we get a cold snap like really quick and we can put it up really fast if it's unexpected i think in the next few weeks we'll probably be okay i think we have a, a couple more weeks of it could potentially get pretty cold but it's been really warm the nights have been 60s so hopefully uh spring is coming and we're not gonna have to deal with the cold until <laughs> october all right. <laughs> so that's Tango and that's Candy. Candy is super friendly. She loves head scratches. She'll step up to you. And Tango wants attention, but he doesn't like hands. So he'll only go on your shoulder or your head. We got some good food today. Oh, that's for the quail. I don't even know what kind of quail they are. Contort, con are they contortix? Contortrix? Contortrix? How do you pronounce that? I'm not sure. And then we found this cute little hide, of course, on our property. Look at them. <laughs> They're so cute. So we sift in here every day uh, to get like all the poop and everything out. We actually deep cleaned everything yesterday. So we power washed all the enclosures, which you're going to be able to see on Chris's solo YouTube channel, which I'm still kind of in it, <laughs> but it's, it's mostly Chris and like his daily vlogs and everything. Um, but the quail eat the little seeds. So it is super helpful to have them in here too. It's like perfect. And they needed a home. So this is like a really good little aviary for them and we may be getting more too. We wanna to see how it works out with them first, but I think there's about like 10 more needing a home. So we might also take them. Those are all the little parakeets. This is probably one of my favorite enclosures that we have. And today when we go grocery shopping in town, I wanna to go get some plants because it's finally warm enough. So I do wanna add some like little ferns and um, maybe some like, grassy plants in here for them to make them feel more at home. <laughs> candy, come here. I'll scratch your head. Oh, Candy wants the head scratches. Tango is destroying your hat. Oh, and he's on my pants. Hey, Tango. So this is our new kitchen, which I don't think we showed on this channel, but um, this is our whole kitchen building that we have just for animal care. It is an absolute disaster and mess right now. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, we're making it work. So what we're doing right now is food prepping and we're gonna give heart guard for the foxes. So we've got some heart guard right here. So what we're gonna try to do is cut open these reptilinks. All right, so these are really cool little, um, basically like a little sausage made for animals. So we're gonna cut that open and put the heart guard inside it. 
All right, so we have them hidden away inside the Reptilink. So hopefully they don't know. All right, who are we feeding first? All right, first up, we're gonna go do the red foxes. So we have the heartworm for them and check out how their enclosures come along. You hear them going nuts. Oh my goodness, the drama. So this is the secondary enclosure for Hazel and the new fox we're adopting. Oh my goodness. See, like, Hazel! She took right, it? That's one heart one doom. Okay. So now we can... Here, give me Hazel's. So that's the Repti link. And the heart room prevention. So Cure is the only one that's left. She's pretty... She did? Yep. Perfect. All right. Amazing. Nobody's down. Easy peasy. <laughs> so it's chaos in here. They have roasted sweet potatoes, some um, chicken grinds, some exotic canine kibble, and then they got their repti link. And we'll probably give them some more repti links too. They really like them. All right, so we're gonna feed Jet now. We've had a couple updates with him. So um, he had not been eating as much as he should, and we thought he was constipated again, which has happened to him before because he's a desert animal. He doesn't drink very much water, even when it's offered. So that's been a previous issue. So, uh, but that didn't seem to be the uh, issue once we took him to the vet and we're trying to figure it out. So now we're thinking that he might have um, anemia and uh, a case of chronic pancreatitis as well. Yeah. So that's not good. Um, you know, again, we don't know a whole lot about his background before we got him and what his diet was and how that may uh, influence his life now. So we're just having to deal with what we have now. Yeah, he's about five to six years old and... Um... I mean, we're his third home that we know of and the home before us, I know he was just getting like kibble and some boiled chicken. So definitely like not ideal. Um, so yeah, they said it looks like chronic anemia. Um, his white blood cells are low, just, <sighs> and then with the x-ray, you can't um, decipher like the the stomach and the, the pancreas. It kind of all just blends in together on the x-ray, which isn't normal. Um, and some of his counts were elevated so that's why they're thinking it's like a pancreatitis that kind of comes and goes so right now we have rabbit and sweet potato and we hit his medicine in it so we'll see if he eats and if not i guess we're just going to take it and try to offer it later maybe he's a little hungrier he's been eating a little more but usually like he loves his rabbit and like he goes for it first thing this and sweet potato mm -hmm. that's good we're doing a supplement called uh, NutriCal, and that kind of has some different vitamins and vitamin um, iron and stuff like that. So I'm also gonna look into liquid iron for him. Some of my friends that have foxes said when their foxes were anemic, that's what they would do. So I just, I get a little bit nervous with iron because I know sometimes you can do like an iron overdose. Is that the rabbit he's eating? I think so. So that's good. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they talk about it all the time. This is the part that really sucks about having animals because sometimes like the damage is done and they have like chronic issues and obviously we will do everything we can to make him feel better and make him live as long as possible but it's just uh, very emotionally draining and it's very sad. But Olaf's doing well, right? Mm -hmm. Olaf's doing great. So he's on four different meds for life now. Uh, I think we finally figured it out. Every time we feed him, he is eating like a champ. Even after our last update that we did on him, it was still kind of like up and down, but uh, it's pretty consistent right now. So it's been about like three weeks since we added the new meds and he's doing great. So I think we've finally figured it out with him and hopefully we can figure something out for this guy. So here are the Kawadis. So yesterday, Chris and I went crazy. We power washed all of the enclosures, literally just top, bottom, inside out, went on the roof, power washed the roof, got all the leaves off. 
and they just love to poop in this corner. So this was spotless yesterday and look at all the poop already. It is crazy. <laughs> so hi Lil, you can be a nice girl today. So Chris is gonna feed them, we're gonna lock them out. And then every day we scoop the poop. Hi Lola. And then with Chris's new truck, now we can finally like get lots of bags of mulch because it just disappears. I don't really understand it, but like you can see all these uh, bare patches, the wire, so it, it disappears. So we'll get some new mulch and we'll put that in too. Always the last one. Go ahead, Lil. So while Chris is in there just scooping the poop, I'm actually gonna go give some more Repti links to the foxes and just try to bond with them a little bit. So this one is which one is this? This is the omnivore blend. So there's Insects, rabbit, um, quail, collard greens, a bunch of really good stuff. So we'll go give these to the red foxes. You want a little snack? Don't be crazy. So the foxes love the reptilinks. Unfortunately, it's just really hard to give one a snack without the other one coming over and trying to steal it. So they get a little crazy, but things will be easier once we have another enclosure and another lockout. What do you guys think? You guys ate them all. That was it. That's all I have. That was it. So it's really good for them and they really like it. All right. So it's been a while since you guys have seen the prairie dogs. So uh, there's another one. <laughs> we have another prairie dog named Coco in here now. Uh, we've had these guys inside all winter. It's been cold and we had to actually redo the entire uh, prairie dog enclosure. So we had to dig the entire thing out and then break up a bunch of rocks, put them in the bottom, and then put a bunch of smaller rocks on top of that, and then put more dirt back in here. If you want to see me shoveling for hours on end, I did post that on my other channel, Cater Chris. But uh, now they are back outside and happy. Got a little something in your eye. There you go. Yeah, so this is Coco. She's the newest one. There's everyone's favorite, Poppy. Oh, Poppy. That's Big Harvey, who will absolutely bite you, and Cheeky absolutely will bite you as well. So, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people were asking about them, so they're fine. Uh, we were just trying to figure out the enclosure, and I think we finally did it because it poured the other day. <laughs> oh my gosh. It poured the other day, and this all is night still, last night. Yeah, and look, they're all dry. So the problem we were having before was with drainage. It, it was just like the top was dry, but the bottom was mm -hmm. really wet. So now you can see they are digging their burrows again. Um, we did also add some tubing and stuff in here and uh, they are, they're pretty dry. I really do want to try to figure out a way to like add some grass in here and make it not look so boring, but like they just destroy it guys. Like we we really try to make this look nice but uh every day they just rearrange things and there's a new hole in this and that so um they have a good time and that's all that matters i guess aesthetics don't really matter if they're happy right we go and check these got a little egg in there so tiny oh my goodness it's a parakeet egg huh has to be yep so uh with these just like everything else guys we were talking about it you know, alligators or whatever else, uh, the tortoises, they don't... I can't take you seriously, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, they don't have babies, they lay eggs. Everybody's like, what are you gonna do when they have babies? They don't have babies, they lay eggs. Eggs have to incubate before there's a baby. So right now, crack that open, there's no baby yet. It has to be incubated before an embryo uh, will actually develop up into a baby. So. And they weren't sitting on it either. Yeah, so, you know, we crack this open, we're not killing any babies or anything like that. Andy, do you like it up there? She's like, I like it on your head better. And she's back in there. Ooh, not happy. <laughs> so we have to go into town and go food shopping, but there are still two animals that are brand new 
that we need to introduce you guys to. Yeah, let's go check them out. So these are our new, very unique and interesting little creatures that have joined us. So these are Patagonian Mara. Oh, there you go. So these little guys are really cool, really weird and interesting. It's basically like a guinea pig with deer legs. Um, they're also called a Patagonian hare or a Patagonian, a lot of people say cavy, but it's supposed to be cavy. Cavy. Um, cavy. I, I'm going with Mara because I cannot pronounce that one right. I call them cavies. <laughs> But then people got mad at me. <laughs> but everyone I've also met in person ever has also called them cabbies. Um, but yeah, apparently that's not proper. So we're going to go with Mara. Anyways, not to get too lost in the uh, wording there. So they are a species of rodent. And uh, so you can kind of see they, they do kind of look like, uh, like a guinea pig or a capybara. But they have those long, unique deer legs. And they also have uh, kind of like a rabbit face in a way with those big ears. But too. when you say deer legs, people are going to think they have hooves. They, they don't actually have, hooves. have nails. It's strange. So maybe it's just like a giant long rabbit leg. They're really strange. They're really cute. And these guys are really well socialized and healthy. So it's always, we always say that, it's always a nice surprise to get like friendly, socialized, healthy animals. Well, why don't you uh, tell everybody where we got them from? Yeah, so these guys actually came to us from the um, Moorcroft Conservation Foundation. They were downsizing and just looking for a good home. They had a great home uh, over there, but they were looking for someone else to take them. Um, so we were very, very happy to take them, and we are very honored to, uh, to give them a home. They're awesome. They're really, really cool. So what do they eat? So, obviously, we're feeding them some lettuce right now, but they mainly eat guinea pig food. Isn't that weird? Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. He's a big guinea pig. Guinea pig food and Timothy hay. Now, this is our temporary enclosure. It was the only thing that we had that was fully wired on top and on the bottom because not only do they jump pretty high, they dig. They're incredible diggers. I do not think that he's very happy. He looks like fight. <laughs> yeah, he and does. Turkey. Look at him, look at him. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, this is the female. This is Topanga. And this is the boy. And I think we're going with Timothy for Timothy Hay because he loves eating Timothy Hay. I just think they are so cool. I'm kind of obsessed with them. Oh, and before anyone asks, he is neutered. Funny enough, he was actually cryptorchid just like Petunia. So that's, that's crazy. So if you don't know what cryptorchid is, that is when one testicle is retained in the abdomen. So it's like almost an exploratory surgery. And we had the same thing happen Look with our that. pig. He is that's not like in the turkeys. <laughs> All right, so now we are at Publix and buying a bunch of uh, things for the rescue. We got a ton of different stuff from uh, kawadis, parrots, foxes, everything. So we're gonna feed everybody. So we are hopefully gonna be getting donations soon. Right now, gotta pay for everything though. Oy, oy, oy. It's a good thing you have this big truck. I don't know where it is here. Have to tell me. What are we doing? Uh, so I just saw a turtle trying to cross the road. Hopefully, it didn't get right over. This is a really dangerous spot too. It's very mad that I unbuckled. This is a dangerous spot. On which side? Right there. Let's see if we take a look. It's a spotted turtle, I knew it. It's alive? Yes. And it's a spot. Do you want me to get out or you're gonna I'm get out? Be out. safe. I knew Good it. Eyes. I knew it when we passed it. I was like, that's a Good spotted eyes. turtle. Wow. Look at that. Oh my gosh. He literally would have died. Yeah. Wow. I knew it, man. When we passed it, I was like, I think that was a spotted turtle. I've never, I've never like seen a live one. So I wasn't sure, but like, how cool is that? Yeah. People fly. Yeah. Here. Here, let me pull up a little bit. 
so cool. Where do you think he was going? I mean... He lives in this little area right here. We're just gonna let him go right over here? Yeah. Wow. Look at that. That is awesome. This is such a busy highway and people go fast. Look at how long the tail is. Isn't that interesting? Beautiful. So uh, with turtles, you don't want to relocate. You want to put them across where they were going in the direction they were going. If we try to take him to a better place away from the road, he's just going to try to come back to this spot. So you want to put them on the other side of the road in the direction they were going, which is this, which doesn't look like much. I don't know why he lives here, but this is where he was going. Actually, let's put him at bed. You see that little? Yeah. So this is pretty gross, but this looks like this is where he lives. So we'll go ahead and let him go. There he goes.